So I'm back with a new video. Um, I really wasn't sure how many more videos I was going to make and if and when that was actually going to happen. Um, but I felt like uh, I accomplished something here with a new figure slash figures that showed up that I felt like was worth uh, was worth the time making a video and sort of talk through what I'd done here. I do have some things here that are kind of unique that I did want to share with anybody out there who's actually watching. Um, so obviously you can see that this is the HasLab Unicron that arrived a few, few weeks ago. I was a backer, so it showed up among, you know, all the shipments that went out to everybody else who backed it, I guess. Um, and to make a long story short, uh, you know, I, like everybody else, I had a, I felt like I had a great idea as to what I was getting into, like the, the dimensions and the weight and the size and everything like that we've known for a while. And even what this thing is going to look like both in both modes and um, really no secrets about this figure. Um, and I was, you know, in a lot of ways I was underwhelmed. Um, but I knew that I still had to have it because it's Unicron and, um, you know, it's a big deal. So I had to have it. And But I had pretty much written it off as soon as I backed it that, like, you know, I would probably not display it in robot mode because I didn't like the way... You know, there's been plenty of written about it, whether it's the leg panels or the back or um, just all the kibble and et cetera, et cetera, that, you know, makes a robot mode maybe not so appealing. Um, and I was had this grand plan that once I got it, I was going to uh, display it in planet mode because that's, you know, in a lot of eyes, I think people think, in a lot of ways, people think that's the better mode. Um, and I felt the same way. And, you know, as it started to make its way into people's hands and I'd read all the reviews and seen all the reviews and read everything that everybody had to say or whatever and even though they all were very a lot of glowing reviews about how big he is and his presence and his gravity and all that I was still not sold and still was going on down the path of like whatever when I get it he's going to be in planet mode I have a robot mode from the studio cell offering I'll be good with that and um, sure enough, he showed up, and as his name, the Chaos Bringer, like he completely brought chaos to my collection display and um, changed everything. Um, he showed up, and he was, you know, in planet mode, as everybody knows, and I thought it was just fine, and then I decided to transform him, and everything changed. Um, you know, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it because plenty has been already been said, and I won't waste time here, but, you know, he's big. The presence, the gravity, <laughs> you know, he is a planet, so it's almost like he has his own gravitational pull. Um, like, there's just not words that really can describe having this thing in front of you. And I knew right away that as soon as I had him in robot mode, that he had to be displayed in a robot mode, and there's just no way around it. So, my plan to display him in planet mode went out the door. And I had all these things set up. I had, like, fishing wire. I was going to hang him from the ceiling with, like, molly hooks. Um, angle downward so if you came in my office you would see him bearing down on you from the ceiling almost like from the animated movie when you first see him on the phone like bearing down on that planet um, but all that stuff got trashed that whole plan went out the door and immediately it was well how do I display this guy in planet mode or in robot mode and I looked all around my office and nothing was suitable was it going to be too high or too hard to light or too far away or it's difficult to see so you know I sort of bit the bullet and said well I think he has to go on my new display piece it's almost like that piece was meant to be it's like just big enough and the right height and gives me the enough options to light him properly that I think it might make sense and yes if you've seen my other videos you know that I had you know questions about what I was going to do about this piece this whole piece of furniture anyway. I had random Marvel figures on here and accessories and uh, weird lighting and just couldn't quite... I was excited about having a piece but didn't quite know what I was going to do with it. So this I think is going to end up being how this piece ends up being used. So real quick scan. Um, obviously there's Unicron in the middle, the HasLab one, the Studio Cell third-party Unicron on the right in planet mode, and the third-party Shockwave, the Lemon Tree um, revenge slash shockwave on the left. Um, zoom in here a little bit. 
And um, so down here, I also moved some Iron Factory figures. These are the, you know, DJD from their set. Uh, the entire set of figures, they're all one team with a fixed hobby set to sort of give it some depth and height, and break up the space and keep them, give them some space to breathe. The same lights are in there, the Philips Hue light uh, bars or play bars. Uh, it's got kind of a bluish white light right there. It could be any color, any brightness. And on this side, I've got just a mishmash of random Iron Factory figures that just don't go anywhere else, like the Transmetal, Dragon Megatron, Fallen, Overlord, Black Shadow, I think his name is. And same idea with a little bit of effects hobby pieces and the same light bars in here as well. And the whole theme with this whole piece really is that, you know, it's not Autobot or Decepticon specifically, but more like characters that kind of blur the line of allegiance. Um, they're all up to no good, but not necessarily, you know, Decepticon no good. Um, so some of the things that I did to get this thing properly lit, uh, I had raceways in here. I have just some new ones now that sort of match the color of the finish of this oak, I guess. You can see them on the corners here. That's where the wires are hidden for the most part. Uh, these are four Philips Hue Bloom RGB smart lights. So full color, full brightness. Um, this set to, you know, red and blue to kind of mimic the colors that you first see Unicron in the animated movie. Um, and then the four lights that directly light Unicron are those Amazon spotlights that I've used in other displays. And the wires are actually hidden by his stand, which works out great. There's, you don't see too many wires. There's some still in the back. Um, but these things are basically just Velcro to the glass because I didn't want to, I didn't want to drill in the glass and I may move that stuff, so it's just Velcroed right now. The lights are uh, very adjustable, so I can get the light to be, you know, direct the light in any direction I need to, so, um, yeah. He's still not quite as well lit as I would like. Like, I don't know if there's a way to light his face without having a light from above, which I don't know if I can do. Um, but the good news is he's so big, and um, he's, since he's right here at pretty much eye level for me like you can still see him you can still see his detail um, and get a very good idea as to what he is and you know compared to some of my other figures and all that and then the last thing that I wanted to mention was this idea that I just got fairly late in the game but it's basically a Google Nest Home hub whatever they want to call it now a little smart display that's also a speaker and I've had this on here just show, you know, just showing some personal photo album going by um, when it's sitting there in, in idle state. But I got this idea from, like, I guess being at a museum with my daughter, or I think it was, maybe it was a zoo, where they have, like, a random exhibit, and they have, like, a screen on the side that you can read text or, like, see, like, a little animated movie, and it'll tell you more about the exhibit that you're looking at. And I thought, well, I think I can do that with one of these things with a Unicron and make Unicron almost like a museum display <laughs> where, um, you know, I've, I've got a set to where it's just scrolling through a photo album of Unicron screenshots from the animated movie and maybe some other photos, some art that people have done over the years. So you can kind of, if you've never seen Unicron and you just see this massive figure in in my office in my collection and you want to know why it's a big deal you can kind of you know if you wait a little while watch this thing scroll through the pictures and you'll see different pictures of him and what he's doing in the movie and you know how he interacts with some characters other characters who are you know basically nothing and then of course him munching on a planet so you can have a pretty good idea as to what he can do and what he is about with the source ma source material so, yeah, um, so if you've seen my other videos and you care at all, uh, you'll know that uh, this was a new display piece and I had not, not the greatest ideas of what I was going to do with it. I had a bunch of Hot Toys, Marvel figures, m you know, scattered among some SH figure arts. So those are not here anymore, obviously. They're somewhere else. 
that I need to sort out. Um, if I get that sorted out soon, I'm waiting on some more figures to make that work. Um, I'll probably post another video and maybe do like an overview of where my collection is now because things have changed. It doesn't seem like that it was that long ago um, that I felt like things were satisfactory, but Unicron showed up and changed everything, and now I'm back to <laughs> almost the draw back to the drawing board. But yeah, I think that's all there is to say. Um, thanks for watching.